Chief among the billionaires, David Ignatius named in his original 1991 report, was someone whose name I'm afraid to mention for fear of being labeled an anti-Semite and a crazy conspiracy theorist. Well, there's conspiracy theories and there are conspiracy facts, and this person is George Soros. Am I gonna disappear? <laughs> who's become a prolific funder of media organizations through his Open Society Institutes, Democratic politicians, Obama, Hillary on down, and super PACs like Pacronym, a part of the acronym Dark Money Operation that spun out the Shadow Incorporated app that wrecked the Iowa caucuses. By mistake. <laughs> I'm saying by mistake, you can laugh, but come on, you don't believe me, what? Most importantly, he sponsors an array of opposition parties and NGOs in countries targeted by the US, which were exposed in Cablegate. These billionaires have joined with the National Endowment for Democracy, the US government's chief arm for sponsoring regime change to establish an organization that I see as an answer or a counterpoint to the threat of WikiLeaks and a response to the crisis of trust that the US intelligence services experienced after the Iraq war. It's called Bellingcat is a collection of supposedly open source digital detectives led by noted video game expert Elliot Higgins, who has labeled Assange Noel Edmonds with Botox and a dye job, and said that Ecuador, through its partnership with the CIA cutout UC Global to surveil Assange, was merely spying on Julian Assange's wanking schedule. Some real solidarity there. Whenever Russia, Syria, or another global do evildoer accused of some chemical crime, this outfit produces open source findings that immediately demonstrate their guilt in places like Duma, Syria, where the Syrian government was accused of a chemical attack that justified US missile strikes on the country. They're then given awards by the press freedom organizations funded by the billionaires and NATO aligned governments that comprise the imperial ecosystem I just described it is all so much more credible seeming than sourcing information to unnamed US intelligence officials or to defectors with code names like Curveball. Thanks to WikiLeaks, we learned that not everyone at the OPCW, the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons, was comfortable with the organization's findings on Duma, that according to two whistleblowers, the entire incident in April 2018 was staged by US and UK backed opposition groups and the Saudi backed extremist armed opposition to make the case for war we were lied to again. The Committee to Protect Journalists is the major press freedom organization at the heart of this imperial NGO ecosystem. It is funded by the aforementioned billionaires and corporations, and in the past, it has ad advocated for Julian Assange. But at this year's CPJ Gala Award Ceremony, I'm almost done, its executives explicitly refused to name Assange as an imprisoned or persecuted journalist. Instead, see the CPJ honored Lucy Pineda and Miguel Mora, directors of the Cien Pier, Cien Noticias tabloid station in Nicaragua and US-backed leaders of the violent coup that aimed to remove the leftist elected Sandinista government in 2018. And before Pineda and Mora were awarded on stage, they were taken to a personal meeting with Vice President Mike Pence, the face of the government that is seeking to extradite Assange. I should tell you that I interviewed Mora in July 2018 after the coup, and he told me that he favored a Panama-style solution in which the US government, the US military, would invade Nicaragua and take out its leadership. So these are the people that are being honored by press freedom organizations that are ignoring Assange. There could be no better illustration of the betrayal of solidarity and the imperialization of the NGO sector than this repellent display that I just described.